Judges chapter 17. What I'm going to read is from the Bible. Black and white. King James. I'm not going to stretch any word. We're going to read and study the verses as they are and what they say. And you don't need no tradition. You don't need no other person to interpret what it says because it's plain and simple. And there was a man of Mount Ephraim. Hosea 4.17. Daniel Hosea 4.17. Hosea 4.17 Start right off the bat Ephraim is joined to idols That's marriage Let him alone Their drink is sour hmm. Somebody has a drink They have committed whoredoms continually Revelation, the great harlot, the great whore. Her rulers with shame do love give ye. Uh, there's also another religion out there that claims to be of Ephraim, the Mormons. So when you got a Mormon that comes here, you know a Mormon, read Hosea 4.17. Get him to acknowledge, yeah, we come from Ephraim. Idolatry, but... We're not going to talk about the Mormon church here. So, 17.1, And there was a man of Mount Ephraim, whose name was Micah. And he said unto his mother, Oh, mother. That's interesting, mother. The 1100 shekels of silver. Silver is the cost of redemption in the Bible. That were taken from thee, stolen. About which thou cursed. That's the first time that shows up, cursed. Somebody stole money from her and she cursed. And spank is of also in my ears. Mama came to the son and said, Someone stole my blankety blank 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 silver. I have met some people who every other word's a curse. And they're of a particular church. They're filthy. I took it. So her son stole the, the coins, the silver, whatever it is. And his mother said, Blessed be thou the Lord, my son. The son comes to the mother and confesses his sin, and the mother says to him, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my son. Now, I wonder who says that. Indulgences, which upset Luther. There's no rebuke and there's no punishment for the thief. That's only two verses. And when he had restored the 1,100 shekels of silver to his mother, wow, he gave it back. His mother said, I had wholly, not H-O-L-Y, but wholly dedicated the silver unto the Lord from my hand for my son. That sounds good. I mean, I've taken that money that was stolen that you've given back to me. I have wholly given it unto the Lord. That sounds really good. Problem is, that's a comma. We're not done with the sentence. And there will be people you will deal with, they will make a statement that I have given all to God. God is so great in my life. But there's a comma. To make a graven image. And a molten image. Now we as, as a family, and you can go back, and we've already gone through 66 books of the Bible. 
And we're coming back around again. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, and Judges. Chapter 17. What do you think God thinks of Im imagery and idolatry? Is it something? Well, it's an abomination. But I'm wholly given to God. Does that sound anything familiar? And then take the money and go make images, molded images. I mean, go and grave an image. Go take a piece of metal and engrave it to a statue, an image. Go paint a picture, a molded, make a mold and pour brass or liquid metal into it and make out a statue and aid a word. Now, therefore, I will restore it unto thee. I'm going to give the money back to you that you stole. Here you go. You can have it back. Now, the Roman Catholic Church calls themselves the Mother Church. Six times it shows up in three verses in this chapter. Let's watch what happens with this mother and son. I said mother and son religion. And yet he restored the money unto his mother. Yet he restored the money, gave it back. And his mother took 200 shekels of silver. There's 900 left. And gave them to a founder. Who made thereof a graven image. And a molten image. And they were in the house of Micah. Genesis 31, 19. Genesis 31, 19. We're going to get the idea of what's going on here. Genesis 31, 19. And this is the first idolatry in the Bible. And it's stolen. That will pick up in Judges chapter 18, 666. So Genesis 31, 19. And Laban went to shear his sheep. He's a shepherd. And Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. So it's nothing new, these images called aids of worship and they're able to be stolen great gods and if you know the story of Jacob later on he, these images take over and he ends up burying them under an oak they're called aids of worship God calls it an abomination verse 5 and the man Micah had a house of gods the wafer is God the wine is God the mother is God the son is God the priest is God all the statues are gods there are all kinds of you know there are 365 saint days on the Roman calendar every day there's a day dedicated to a saint there's a God of, of Occupations, there's a God of vehicles, there's a God of it's a full moon, it's a God, there is no moon, there's a God of, of feasting, there's a God of birthdays, there's a God of God, God, of gods. You can find it in the, in the Catholic Encyclopedia, and they'll greatly tell you what it's about. And made an ephod. Well, that's an imitation of the ephod that the high priest wore. Gideon tried to make an ephod and they made it an idolatry. They made it an image to worship. It became a burden to his family, his ephod, which was made of gold. And a teraphim. What's a teraphim? It's a household deities or images. You see, in the time of Abraham, when he left Ur, Ur was the city of the moon goddess. That city had given himself over to the moon goddess. And Ephesus, in the book of Acts, had given themselves over to Diana. Great Diana of the Ephesus. Great Diana of Ephesus. 
cities had given themselves over to a particular god. Here, what's going on is, here Micah's house, Micah's house has been given over to a particular god. Not just the city. And he has a teraphim. He has images of his gods. Some houses have given their image, uh, Im, Im, images of posters of race car drivers, actors and actresses, singers, models, dancers, little trading cards, stuffed animals, the family. And consecrated one of his sons who became his priest, a non Levite, someone who has no business being a priest, and he makes his own priest. Does that sound familiar? Verse 6. In those days there was no king in Israel, for every man did that which was right in his own eyes. 21-25, the close of Judges. 21-25, the last verse in Judges. In those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in their own eyes. And the ways of man is death, Proverbs says. Not quoting that verse completely. Every man did that was right in his own eyes. That's the Catholic Church. What my priest, what our Pope says, that is right. That is tradition overheld, overbearing over the Word of God. Our priest, our Pope has more bearing in what the Bible says and what God has to say. In their eyes, we trust their traditions and what man has to say. Or have another yeah, so I mean, how? What's going on here? He's supposed to be a Levite. No, he's not a Levite. Oh. He's an Ephraimite. Oh yeah. Verse one. Chapter eighteen, verse one. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Nineteen one, and it came to pass in those days there was no king in Israel. Who was supposed to be the king of Israel? God. There was no God in Israel. No ruler of God in Israel. You can tell what's going on here. Verse 7. And there was a young man out of Bethlehem, Judah. There's, there's two Bethlehems. This one's out of Judah. This is where Christ is born. Of the family of Judah, who was a Levite. And he sojourned there. So here's a priest of God. And he's going to move. And he had that right. And the man departed out of the city of Bethlehem, Judah, to sojourn where he could find a place. He's not happy where he is. And he came to Mount Ephraim to the house of Micah as he journeyed. If that was the only last period there in this chapter, if we could only finish right there. But we're going to read on. I wonder what the Pope and the Dope would say about what we would read on. Try reading chapter 17 to your Catholic friends. Verse 9. And Micah said unto him, the Levite, Whence comest thou? And he said unto him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem, Judah. And I go to sojourn where I may find a place. Interesting how much Bethlehem Judah shows up. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, 
written by a Catholic man. How much that song is sang in the Baptist church. Oh. He says, now you sing terrible. I know, but what about the reference? Old Town of Bethlehem. You read that hymn, Old Town of Bethlehem. It's all about Bethlehem, not Christ. And then when it does speak about Christ, how do we know he was snoring? How do we know that... Uh, Verse 9. I'm a Levite of Bethlehem, Jew, and I go to sojourn where I may find a place. And when Micah said unto him, Dwell with me. So far, so good. That's a comma. Shall I read on? Watch. And be unto me a father and a priest. Oh! Holy Spirit, what are you doing? And when Jesus Christ will quote in the book of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, Call no man your father on the earth. Micah has told us that there is a father and a priest. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that very interesting? Wow. A father and a priest. My church, I had Father Fontaine before I was lost, before I was saved. You would all address him as Father. There it is. In the King James Bible, Judges 17, verse 10. I wonder what modern Bibles do with that. This is long before Jesus, 1406. 1,406 years approximately before Jesus Christ is even born in Bethlehem. And a man is calling a priest a father. And he's younger than him. This is long before Constantine in 313 to 325 A.D. Long before Constantine sees the, the vision of having too many pepperoni, anchovies, pizzas. You have a man in the Bible, in a place where there is no king, and everybody did was right in their eyes. You have a man calling a priest, father. And cross-reference to that, Jesus Christ says, call no man your father. Right out of Judges 17. We're not done. And we'll give thee ten shekels of silver by year. I'm going to give you a wage to be a priest and a father. Sound familiar? And a suit of apparel. Oh, wow. I wonder if you had the, a, a little white spot here. Would you think? Would you think he had a garment that recognized him above anybody else around? That when you would see him, you would know that he's a priest and a father by his clothes. And when I see you get in an elevator, and with other people, I will call you a reprobate, and I will quote the scriptures everybody in that elevator, as I've done many times, to say, call no man your father. He's got a peril. That's the first time a peril shows up in the Bible. Interesting. You know why the priests wear that little white thing? So you would recognize him and you would give him the title of priest or father when you see him. And I victuals. I'll give you food, I'll give you money, and I'll give you a place to stay. A rectory. Should be a rectum. So the Levite went in. Couldn't pass up that deal. Now let's think about this Levite for a minute. Didn't the Levites get the best of everything? Mm -hmm. The best of the of the meat, the first right group, and he's gonna settle for what Micah may run out of one day. He's not getting the best now. 
And we're not done. Verse 12. We're not done. And Micah consecrated. Oh, wait a minute. 11. So the Levite went in and the Levite was content. He was happy, willing to do, to dwell with the man. And the young man, what are you doing calling a younger man than you, a father? I don't see anywhere where he had any children. He may have, but the Bible doesn't record it. How can you be a father without children? And when you put a priest with a child, they don't know what to do with the male children. Kind of a little problem with the Catholic Church, don't we? That's open and outright. I can say that. It was unto him as one of his sons. Altar boys. In verse 12, Micah consecrated a Levite. That's exactly what they do. You know, I was told in the 70s that the Roman Catholic Church in search for priests. That's what I'm told. I've not seen it myself, but as I'm told by a man, I would I would not doubt that the Catholic Church put ads in Playboy to look for priests. Wow, that's a great consecration of priests. He consecrated the Levite. God already consecrated him. What's he doing consecrating him? But we don't have no God. Everybody did what was right. And the young man became his priest and was in the house of Micah. Catholic Church of Mary, Blessed Mary Catholic Church, St. Joseph Catholic Church, the Micah Catholic Church. There it is. See, it's called his house. They named their churches after people and Micah named his church after him. Long before the apostles, long before Peter was ever even thought about being conceived, long before Constantine, 1400 years before Jesus Christ is born. Now watch the Roman Catholic. I grew up, I can say I grew up as a Roman Catholic, Polish. Then said Micah, if you never ever dealt with a Catholic witnessing to him, you will not understand verse 13. Now know I that the Lord will do me good, seeing I have a Levite to my priest. You know, there's a look who we are. And they will get in your face when you're preaching the gospel. Does not this be judged? You're turning people away. You're so mean. You're so loud. We're the perfect. I let my light shine. They're the most falsest, strongest idiots around. Because they think, oh, because God thinks we're so great. God didn't judge. And God says, you know what? You're a puke. There's a Catholic church right there in Judges 17. There it is. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. 